I appreciate everyone coming today. My name is Bill Mers. I'm a regional sales manager for Gusmer. I actually cover this area um, in, all the way down to uh, San Diego and kind of share a lot of uh, territory with uh, Greg Sitton, who uh, introduced uh, Nate Starbard. So I've been with Gusmer for about 14 years. Before that, I was a plant manager, senior winemaker for the wine group, and other various wineries in, in the San Joaquin Valley. So most of the experience I've had is actual hands-on experience working with the membranes and then learning from customers because that's the interesting part I think of my job is learning every single day from customers that have different situations and so it's kind of fun to find out how their, their perspectives are. So I want this to be a very interactive uh, presentation so if you have questions please let me know. It's here for you, not for me, but for you guys. So if there are questions, please ask, don't be afraid to. So some of my presentation is gonna overlap a little bit of what Nate went over. I have to reiterate the fact that membrane filtration, I think, is the least expensive thing that you can get the most bang for your buck for in the quality of your wine, as Nate was mentioning. If you do it effectively, the cost is very, very minimal and has a lasting effect that changes the quality of that wine in the bottle. If you don't do it, you can have disastrous effects with contamination, re-fermentation, those kinds of things. So it is, yes, it can be very expensive, but if you look at it really in the long term, it's very inexpensive for adding quality. Today we're really gonna cover integrity testing. Nate kind of went over everything about membranes, how they're made, you know, the different material that goes in the membranes, but we wanna talk about integrity testing of membranes, the principles behind it, what is bubble point, and then the two other accepted methods of integrity testing that are non-destructive, that are used in the industry, and help you maybe understand a little bit about that. This is your typical setup here of your uh, housing. Don't wanna kill myself on my housing setup. The pre-filter and the final filter, you can see the Bevigard M on the inlet side. That is a non-integrity testable membrane. It is not an absolute membrane, so you're not gonna be able to integrity test that. The final filter, the, the Vitapor, is integrity testable. That is the membrane that really we're gonna be focusing on as far as integrity testing. The uh, Bevigard is there, but there's no way for you to be able to test it. So basically what you're doing with integrity testing is you're looking to make sure that the membrane itself is in good shape, that there are no cracks, there's no leaks, there's no issues that are going to allow contaminants through the membrane. It is the only membrane that you can check this way. You can see here that we have contaminants being stopped. That shows no, this would be an integral membrane here. No contamination is gonna be getting through the membrane. On this side over here, yes, there's a break or breach in the membrane system. Contamination can go downstream. Now, it's important to realize that just because your membrane is integral, that does not mean you cannot have contamination downstream. I think Nate kind of uh, touched on that a little bit, is you have to do the sterilization. You have to make sure that your line is sterilized, there's no contamination in your, in your bottling head or in the bottling room so that you know that with both the membrane being integral and the fact that you've sterilized your line, you should have no problems. But stuff happens. Let's say you're bottling, but one of your guys went out to the waste pond to double check how the waste pond water level is. He slips, got some mud on him, comes in, brings it into the bottling room. All the stuff that was on him now is in the air and can go onto, the mem onto your filler head and contaminate things or let's say you just weren't able to get that 180 degree water at the end of your sanitation, so you think it's done, but it really wasn't. Membrane's still integral, but you can still have contamination. So that's an important thing for you to, to understand. Just because you have the integrity doesn't mean if you don't do the sterilization properly, you cannot have problems. As we said, only the final filters are the, the filters that we are going to integrity test. Why do we integrity test? Obviously, as Nate was pointing out, 
The membranes themselves come from Millipore. They have been tested at least three times before they leave that facility. So they know that these membranes are integral. However, things happen when we're shipping them. UPS drives a forklift through one of the boxes. They drop the box. It cracks the end of the membrane. You never know. Even your guys themselves, if they are going to put a new membrane in the housing, let's say they drop that membrane. They don't think there's anything wrong with it. They go ahead and put it into the housing, but they say, you know what, it was already integrity tested when it left Millipore, you'd have a problem. And this happens all the time. I recommend, if, uh, as part of your SOP for installing membranes, if one of your operators drops the membrane, don't throw it away, but don't put it in the housing, particularly if it's a multiple round housing, because if, You've cracked it, now you don't know which membrane is bad. It fails integrity test, now you've wasted all this time doing sanitation, doing the integrity test, maybe troubleshooting. You've been down for maybe two hours. Now you go back and put a new membrane in and have to go through the whole process again. So I suggest you set the membrane aside and then come back with a single round housing and integrity test that membrane again or the membranes in the housing again on their own to make sure that you don't have an issue or you can find the, pr the problem. Does that make sense? These single housings are really uh, powerful to have, particularly if you have multiple round housings, because you can do that. We don't suggest you throw away membranes. We don't suggest that you um, waste a lot of time trying to figure out which membranes are down. Being down is expensive. What did you say, Nate, six bucks an hour or something? Or was it six bucks a minute? Yeah. So. If you've, you're standing around six bucks a minute, you're down for, for two hours trying to figure things out, it's expensive. So you can set your membranes aside, retest them at a later date, put new ones in, and get things rolling. The other thing is that if someone installs the membranes incorrectly, you didn't wet the membrane uh, O-rings correctly in water and set them into the housing, you can actually roll the O-rings. It's a two O-ring set that's in the membranes. And if one is pinched, you're not going to get integrity. So it's important that the installation is done correctly. And we wanna remember that when you're doing the install of the membrane into the base, you're only using water to lubricate the O-rings. I actually had someone use silicone lubricant. It's a food grade silicone lubricant, but they used the food grade silicone lubricant on all the membranes and everything was great. Membrane set fine into the base, except for when they hit it with 180 degree water, the silicone grease vaporized, went all over on the inside of their housing and plugged the membranes up. They could not get integrity, and then it was a mess for them to clean up. So it's very simple. Water is the easiest thing. Just simply dip the, the um, membrane in, get the O-rings wet, simply slide it in. And we'll have that part of a demonstration later on when we do the integrity test because we'll actually do a bubble point. The other thing that can happen is if you are, had the housing or the membrane in operation, you really shouldn't have any problems except for if you have water hammer. And how many people know what water hammer is? Okay, so water hammer, for those people that don't know, it would be like uh, you have a pump that's going full blast into a tank and your operator goes, uh oh, my tank's overflowing. He slams the valve quick, real, you know, shut real quick. The whole line just slams back and forth. That's water hammer. It's a shock in the line due to um, change of, and the speed of the liquid going through the line. And it can actually blow a membrane out of the base if you're going backwards. So you want to definitely make sure that if you have any kind of incidents where there's water hammer or pressure changes like that, that you double check your membrane. You may want to stop and actually do an integrity test on the membrane to make sure that you don't have a problem. Nothing worse than continuing to run, bottling, and then you have to put everything on quarantine, wait till you have uh, clear plates come back from your test because you weren't sure whether or not you had a problem. When do you do the uh, integrity test? As Nate was mentioning, Anytime you put new membranes into the housing, you want to do a new integrity test. Every time you sterilize, you want to do the integrity test. At the end of your run, you want to do an integrity test. The reason being is you give yourself that assuredness 
that you don't have, you did not have a problem. So sterilizing the membrane is very, very uh, difficult. That's a, that's a tough thing for the membranes. You're going 180 degrees for a period of time, then you're cooling things off. Things expand and contract. Tough time for that membrane. You wanna make sure that there was no problem during that sanitation that caused an issue. Then you wanna make sure that at the end of the run, you're sanitizing or you're uh, checking your membranes to give you that self-confidence in knowing that you didn't have a breach in the membrane during the run so that you, you relatively feel comfortable being able to put your wine up, wait for your final bottle check, and then release the wine. This is a picture of the PVDF membrane. It's important to, to realize that it is not a bunch of uh, holes poked into a piece of paper. It is layers of filaments on top of each other. And actually when, it's, when you say 0.45 or 0.65 or 1.0 or whatever it is, it's not that there's actually a, a pore size that big. It is actually saying that that membrane will retain whatever that, that micron rating is. They actually do a physical challenge with particles the size that they're hoping the membrane will retain. And it's a treacherous path in that membrane. It's very thin. As Nate was mentioning, it's about as thick as a piece of paper. But what happens is the critter or the particle enters that membrane, it gets stuck in the center. It can't go forward, it cannot go backwards. That's why you cannot force things through a membrane like you can with a pad filter. Your pad filtering, I'm sure all of you have seen this, you've got a great filtration job going. You've done three quarters of the tank, you're down to maybe the last foot of the tank. You're starting to see the differential pressures come up. You go, you know what, I don't want to change this. We're just going to muscle it through. So you raise the pressure and all of a sudden clarity in your tank goes, what are you doing? You're refiltering the whole tank. You can't do that with a membrane. What's going to end up happening is you're going to starve your bottling head and then to, and then to a point you won't be able to get the membrane clean or you're just going to collapse the membrane. So you don't want to do any of those things. But you're not going to be able to force things through that membrane. Conversely, the housing as it gets older doesn't wear out and things don't bypass. You either have integrity or you don't have integrity. If it passes integrity, it's fine. If it doesn't, then you have to figure out why. But it's not because the stainless steel war or the, the pores got bigger or anything like that. It doesn't happen. So there are basically three different types of dairy tests. The first one being bubble point. That's the one that most people kind of get a little hung up on. It sounds scary, bubble point. What is the bubble point? We're gonna discuss that. The second one is diffusion. Gas actually diffuses through the liquid in the pore space and the membrane. There, this is one of the tests that's used. The other one is pressure hold. We're actually pressurizing the housing and uh, allowing a stabilization period of time and looking for the pressure decay. It's based on, on surface area, the number of membranes in the housing. So, what is bubble point? Bubble point is pressure which liquid wetting the membrane is actually forced out of the pore spaces by the gas. That's the reason why they call it bubble point because when the liquid now <coughs> is pushed out of the pore space, gas can go through the membrane and when you have a hose in a bucket, it bubbles. It'll look like a little kid blowing on a straw and a glass of milk. That, that's the bubble point. And it's a very simple way to do the integrity test. But it can only be done on single round housings, maybe a three round housing, but the more membranes you have in the housing, the more difficult it is to determine whether you've actually achieved the bubble point or where you've had failure early because you get diffusion of gas going through that membrane and you start to see bubbles. And the more, uh, more membrane surface area you have, the more diffusion you have, the more diffusion, the more bubbles in the, uh, the bucket. So it makes it a little bit more, more difficult to do. I get questions on this all the time. People call me up, call me and say, you know, hey Bill, uh, I've got a membrane in the housing, it's a 0.45, uh, what's the uh, bubble point for that? Well, for millipore, I know it's 28 PSI, but if you're using somebody else's uh, membranes, you're gonna have to ask them what the bubble point is. Everybody's uh, membrane is a little bit different. PES, one of the other major uh, membrane uh, 
types has a different bubble point. If you look at every box from Millipore, this is a little 10 inch box here. On the end of the box, it gives you specifically the lot number, the type of membrane, and everything that's on there. I would suggest that you have this as part of your SOP for your bottling line, that your operators, if they're putting in new membranes, have to double check that they have actually the correct membrane. They're not confusing the Vitapore or the final filter with the pre filter. So that's there. The other thing is on the inside of every membrane box from Millipore is a C of A. On that C of A, it says specifically what the integrity test method or bubble point pressure is. In this case, it says here that it was guaranteed to exhibit uh, water bubble point equal to or greater than 28 PSI. So it gives you the answer right there. And then you're able to staple this onto the work order as well. So you have a C of A along with verification that it was the right membrane going into the right application. So if you look also here, the different micron ratings of integrity testable membranes from Millipore have different bubble points. So one micron, and I'm not really sure why anyone would use a one micron filter that needed to be integrity testable, but if you needed to, Millipore has one, but the bubble point here is 9 PSI. 0.65 is 14, 0.45 is 28, and then 0.22 is 45. And like Nate was mentioning, most of the 0.22s that's being used in the wine industry is for bottle or for water filtration, and I, I'll be honest with you, many people don't do integrity testing. If you're not going to do integrity testing, at least do it when you install that membrane to make sure that you have not rolled an O-ring or, or that you didn't have a problem with it ahead of time so you know for sure that you are not having bypass. Otherwise, you're wasting money to buy a point two <laughs> membrane. <clears throat> Any questions so far? So. Step one of doing the bubble point itself. You're going to do your sanitation, go through the 180 degree rinse for 30 minutes, cool the membrane down. When it's completely cooled down, you're gonna shut the inlet outlet off and just open the drain valves to allow that filter housing to drain naturally. You don't want to put gas on it to force the, the liquid out of the housing faster. I know it's tempting, everyone wants to get online quicker, but if you do that, you stand the risk of actually exceeding the bubble point, blowing the pore spaces, um, blowing the water out of the pore spaces, in which case you'd have a false fail when you do your integrity test. So you just want to naturally let the housing drain. Once that happens, you hook up your gas to, it, to the housing itself. Make sure that um, all the valves are closed, everything's ready to go. You hook up your gas line, or your little uh, bubble point line right here, bottom of the housing, to your water tank. And then you go ahead and bring your gas in, and you bring it in at five pound increments, slowly. The reason why you do that is because you do have diffusion that's going through that membrane. So you will see bubbles every now and then as you increase. What you wanna do is make sure that the bubbles don't continue once you hit a certain point. So Five pounds, you might see one or two bubbles. You stop, let it stabilize. Once it's stabilized, go on to 10 pounds and do that subsequently on up to the bubble point. Now, membranes are like, I would use the analogy of being like a balloon. They're going to fail integrity at the very earliest possible. You're not gonna get up to 27 pounds and have a failure. In fact, if you get up to 27 pounds and you see bubbles, I'm gonna to say to you that probably your pressure gauge is not calibrated correctly because failure is going to happen within the first 10 to 15 pounds. Now, if you have a failure at 15 pounds, that's beyond non-calibration compliance with, the, with the, the pressure gauge. But if you're somewhere between 25 and 32 pounds, you're, you're gonna be right there. Bigger thing would be is just to make sure that you have good operating pressure gauges on your housings and that you have at least 
two of them, if, you only, if you're only using one, one housing here, you have to have two pressure gauges to be able to get your differential pressures. So you wanna make sure that those are both calibrated together so they're close. You don't wanna have one with a at resting pressure at 10 PSI and it's resting pressure, another one, the arrows or the needles bent and so you don't really know what the pressure is. And there's plenty of times I walk into a place and they say, yeah, we got the pressure gauge on there. There's no needle. So that doesn't work if you don't have a needle on your pressure gauge. Again, you might see small diffusion bubbles coming through the, the uh, membrane as you're increasing, but you're looking for that vigorous bubbling, like, like a, uh, someone blowing in a straw in a, in a cup of uh, liquid. You'll see that and it will be obvious when you see that, the difference. The next test is the diffusion test that we were talking about. Now, this is a good test, however, it's a little bit more challenging because you actually have to collect the gas that comes off the, uh, off the test. So it, you're gonna be actually measuring how much liquid, or how much gas is flowing through the liquid in the pore spaces in a certain amount of time to know whether or not you have integrity. Here's the, the diffusion rates. So if you're looking at a 0.45, you have 45 mils per minute at 22 PSI. Kind of a pain in the rear end to do this one. You know, you have to have a graduated cylinder, you have to have someone there measuring, watching. Uh, it's not as convenient. This would be, here you have your graduated cylinder, you're trying to catch the gas going through. The more common test that people use for multiple round housings, big, big housings, 12 round, 24 round, 36 round, is gonna be the pressure hold test. The pressure hold test uses 80% of the bubble point. So what you're doing is bringing slowly your pressure up on the housing once it's been sterilized and isolated. And then you're allowing a stabilization period for that housing to make sure that things have settled down and then you, you do the test time off, where you're, you're testing for maybe five minutes and watch the pe pressure degrade. There's actually a calculation that is in the box as well when you get your, uh, your membrane that tells you what calculation you need to use to be able to figure out the pressure decay based on the number of membranes and the size of the membranes. This is what most multiple round housing users are, are working with. You know, it depends on how fast you're able to stabilize stuff. It could be anywhere from five minutes to 10 minutes, depending on what you want to do. Most of the guys I've seen are five minutes. But you can, if you have, um, if you're doing this manually, you, you can adjust the, t the temperature, or I mean the time. Um, if you're doing this with an, uh, one of these programmed integrity testers, you know, uh, there are a number of them, Enotech makes them, there's a number of them out there on the market. Uh, you have to do the input. And so you choose which one you want. So you've done your integrity test, but now you've gotten to a point where you have a problem. And we're all gonna run into problems. And here's where you need to use a little bit of empowerment of your uh, operator to be able to make some decisions to look for the issues to solve problems. And you don't wanna go on for hours and hours and hours looking for problem solving. You wanna be able to try to, to nail things down fairly quickly, time is money. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to look for is maybe you have a pressure leak in your housing or your upstream piping. How many of you in here have a spray bottle with soap in it out there on your integrity line? You may consider getting that because if you have a pressure drop, you think things have failed too quickly on your housing, you may want to go ahead and spray the housing down, look for bubbles, look for leaks. If you have leaks around where the Teflon tape is, gaskets, the base, those are good ways for you to be able to easily see where the leak is very quickly because it'll, it'll bubble. So it's something for you to consider doing. The gaskets on these housing, this is very simple. Everything is, is tri-clover fitting gaskets. 
But on multiple round housings, they'll have D-rings on the, on the base. You may have gaskets different on the, um, the valving. You may, or even on the elbows that go to your housing. So you're, you're gonna wanna look and make sure that those are in good shape. Do a PM on your housing just like you do anything else. If the gaskets are bad, get new gaskets. Those D-rings will start to, uh, to crunch down after uh, multiple uses, especially since they're, they've got a heavy housing on top of it, and then you're bolting it down tight to make sure there's a good connection. If the D-ring is flatter than the base, you're not gonna be able to get a seal. So that's something you can do. In fact, you're, you can order those from um, any of the local gasket shops, you'd be able to find those, as long as it's either silicone or EPDM, it's very simple. So you've already checked your housing, everything looks good there, you know the gaskets are in good shape, no leaks. Now the next things for you to look at would be, is your filter fully wetted? Did you actually vent your housing to make sure that you had no air gap in here when you were sterilizing? If it's not wetted, you're not gonna get a good integrity test. You have to re-wet the membrane. You also wanna maybe open up the housing and look to see if you can physically see rolled O-rings. Maybe you didn't notice it or the operator didn't notice it when they put the membrane into the base, but if you roll an O-ring, you'll see the little orange tab head poking out like a little uh, gopher sticking out of a hole. You'll see very clearly. Are the O-rings missing? Are they, uh, were they removed? Let's say someone had taken that membrane out, you'd stored it for a long period of time, you need to remove the O-rings so they don't swell, otherwise you'll never get them back in the housing. Maybe someone forgot to put the O-rings back in and they just stuck the membrane back in the housing. So those are things to look for. The final thing would be, if you've gone through all that, you still can't figure it out, pull the membranes out of that housing, put new membranes in, start over, and give one of us at Gusmer a call to help you out, take a look at what's going on. But you don't want to keep going for on forever and ever and ever. You want to definitely make a call at some point in time and say, we need to just make, make a change, move forward. As Nate was mentioning as well, if you're doing um, shutdown for the weekend, you can leave hot water in there, you can push all the water out, use nitrogen to store the membranes over the weekend. If it's gonna be for a day or two, maybe a week, you can leave the membranes in place, use parasitic or acidified water with uh, KMS, SO2. Uh, those all work very well, no caustics. Um, don't ever put caustic on the membranes, you will destroy the membranes. Um, if you're going to go longer than maybe a week, you may wanna consider pulling the membranes out of the housing, taking the O-rings off, and as Nate said, either use um, alcohol or you can use the parasitic and acidified um, water with SO2. Those all work really well. If you do use the alcohol, do make sure that you rinse everything out because it does change the surface tension of the membrane, so you're not gonna get a good integrity test, you'll get a false, a fail. And this is also a little troubleshooting guide that you, your operators can use. It's available if you, if you need this. Um, we have it online. All the presentations are posted online. And so you'd be able to look that up or you can give your uh, salesperson a call and we could send this to you. So before I actually do a bubble point test, is there any questions that you might have? Yes, sir, Nate. The uh, heavy yard or the one that's pre-filtered, can you can back flush slowly. All, all the membranes, the Vitapore has been um, actually validated for back flushing. It's slow, but obviously if you're back flushing when the membrane is hot, you have to be very careful. It's low pressure, low flow. Um, you can back flush the Bevagard as well, the same situation, but um, just be careful. It's low, just very low flow. There isn't the support system for, for it going backwards, right? All the support system is going forward. And really with Vitapore, I know there are a number of people who like to back flow their Vitapores, but if you think about it, 
I don't see the benefit of doing that. It's only gonna knock what's on the outside of the membrane off. It's a treacherous path, everything's stuck in the middle. So there's, you're not gonna get anything that's stuck in the membrane out of it. So I'm not saying you can't do it. People do it, they do it all the time. I just don't recommend it. Does the vulnerability to that flushing apply to plate filtration as well? Does it apply to what? Plate filtration. Um, you know, that's a little bit different because if you're using a filter press, you have the two plates that are there and you've got a pad that's in between, so you have support structures going both ways. And a pad filter is a nominal filter, so you can actually unload things going backwards. All right. Well, if you wanna come up, um, if, you, if you can see everything where you're at, that's fine. If you wanna come up and get closer, by all means, come on up. So I had to be a little bit um, creative here Normally you would have had flow of uh, water through your membrane. I obviously cannot put water through the membrane here because there is no drain. So we've just soaked these membranes in water. And I'm using a 10 inch vitipore because it's easier to soak a 10 inch than it is a 30 inch. You can see how easy that was just to put that in. All right, so I have it isolated, inlet, outlet, closed. The, the uh, drain on the outlet side is open to the hose. We use a Stobly fitting for this. We do not sell Stobly. Let me see if I can get this off here. But these fittings, you can find them online. It's S-T-A-U-B-L-I. They're very high quality air fitting. And the nice thing about this is if you have that, it's different than your maintenance guys quick disconnects that they're using for their tools. So they can't intermix the two. So uh, I think this is a much better choice. So what we're gonna do now is I've got the regulator backed off, I've blocked it off here. We don't wanna force gas through it too quickly. You wanna make sure it's just low flow, five PSI. You may see when we, when we first start, a little bit of bubbles coming out. Remember, that's just diffusion. All right, so we're, we're now at five. So we're just gonna wait for a second, make sure it stabilizes, no problems. All right, so now we're up around 10. And you'll get a bubble or two, but you can see it's not bubbling constantly. Now, you always wanna make sure the housing is completely empty, otherwise you're not really integrity testing the whole membrane, you're only te integrity testing the section of the membrane that's exposed. All right. So, Two bar is 28 PSI, we're almost there. So 
So we're at 28 PSI. It hasn't bubble pointed yet, but you know the integrity is good. You've, you hit 28 PSI, but we're going to go ahead and exceed that now and show you. There you go. That's what the bubble point is. So you can see just that small amount of diffusion that we had didn't amount to what the pressure is here for bubble point. And you can see where you could actually have a big problem if you had multiple round housings and you're trying to do an integrity test. It wouldn't work. So I was worried when I first started setting this thing up that all I was gonna be able to do is show you a failure, but at least we show you now that the success. Yeah.